Welcome to Mending Broken Britain in 10 Minutes. Well, it may take a little bit more than that. My name's Rachel McGuinness and I'm the founder of Zest Lifestyle, or some people may know me as the Chief Resilience Officer, and I show people how to optimise their energy and their productivity by putting their lifestyle under the lens. So if you like, I'm the well-being side of flexible working. First of all, I wanted to share with you a few facts about our economy. Did you know that the UK is ranked third out of 27 for the longest hours worked in Europe per week? And as a result, are we more productive? Well, actually, we're not. We're 12th out of 27 for productivity output per hour. In 2010, this report commissioned by Investors in People, compiled by the Work Foundation, predicted that the UK would be slower to come out of recession than some of its European counterparts. Why? Because they said that the British workforce is not healthy enough to drive the improvements in productivity that the UK needs. So why is this? Well, one in four of us are now obese. As you can see from the slides, some of our superheroes are getting a bit on the weighty side. Less than 30% of men and women actually eat their five a day fruit and vegetables. Diagnosed cases of diabetes have hit a record high and did you know that it could potentially bankrupt the NHS in a generation if we don't change our ways? And we're actually the third laziest country in Europe after Malta and Serbia. And only 20% of us do enough exercise to be healthy. So basically, your economy needs you. So how do we do this? Well, here's a basic formula. Energy plus productivity equals healthy people, performance and profits. So what makes up energy and productivity? Well, it's sleep, plus fuel, plus move, plus switch off and focus, which gives you more energy and makes you more productive and makes you more resilient. Let's look at sleep first of all, because I think that is the most important. Here are some statistics from a recent sleep survey. Apparently 52% of us have problems with sleep in this country, and 47% of us have problems with energy levels. So that's nearly half the population having problems with their energy and over half the population having problems with their sleep. And we're actually sleeping 45 minutes less per night than we were 25 years ago. And humans are hardwired to have seven to nine hours sleep per night. And we're the only species on this planet that can mess with its body clock. If you sleep less than four hours a night, five nights in a row, you're actually cognitively impaired, which means that you're legally drunk. And if you don't sleep enough, hormones like ghrelin kick in and ghrelin regulates your appetite. And this is the hormone that's going to be making you crave more carbohydrate because you're tired. You're going to need more fuel. You're going to need more energy. If you don't sleep enough, it's going to impair your immune system and make you more vulnerable to serious illness and disease. So what are the benefits of sleep? What does it do? Well, at night, your body does all its repairs. And also, it's when your brain does all its processing and consolidation of information that it's been filtering and being exposed to during the day. So you need to have at least seven hours sleep a night minimum. So moving on to fuel or your diet. Apparently, 34% of us in the UK skip breakfast and men are the worst perpetrators and guys, if you are skipping breakfast, you're actually increasing your risk of diabetes by 21%. Only 50% of us take regular lunch breaks. And for every pound that we're overweight, we're increasing our risk of diabetes by 4%. So a bad diet, like having a bad sleep regime, will impair your immune system and make you more vulnerable to serious illness and disease. So what's not good for you? Well, sugar, corn syrup and wheat. Sugar is being branded as the new cocaine. It is highly addictive and it's sugar that makes you fat, not fat. Corn syrup is 10 times sweeter than sugar and again, highly addictive. I mean, it's even more addictive than sugar. And you're going to find this in mass produced foods, packet foods, processed foods. And gluten will also make you put on weight. So gluten is what we find in wheat flour. So anything like cakes, pasta, pastry, bread. If you're eating huge amounts of these types of foods, it's going to make you fat. Humans weren't really meant to eat all this stuff all of the time. And 
I advise people to follow the 80-20 rule, which means eating healthily 80% of the time and 20% of the time eat what you want. Also, watch your portion sizes. We're actually eating 50% more than we were 25 years ago. And eat three meals a day, so avoid skipping any meals and avoid snacking. Snacking's actually only been in since the 1970s and was introduced by the food industry. And make sure that you're eating enough at mealtimes so you don't need to snack. Eat fresh food, not packet food or processed food. And eat at least five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. We need to be drinking at least six to eight glasses of water a day. 75% of the people in this country are dehydrated. Our bodies are 80% water. And actually minimum dehydration will slow your metabolism by 3%, which means that cuts down your ability to fat burn. Moving on to move or fitness. Humans are actually designed to walk four to five miles a day. So that's around 10,000 steps. So this is where the pedometer craze for walking 10,000 steps has come from. But most of us spend 95% of our working day on our backsides. So what are the benefits of exercise? Well, it helps optimise your brain and puts you into learning mode. It makes you more resilient and improves your mood. It also improves your immune system and reduces your risk of serious illness and disease. It maintains healthy joints and bones, increases your muscle mass, improves your metabolism and your ability to fat burn, it controls your weight and improves your self-confidence and your self-esteem and also improves your sex life. I know this slide looks a bit like an exercise disaster. I advise people to do three different types of exercise, strength, aerobic and stretching. Strength will increase your muscle mass. Aerobic activity will improve your cardiovascular capability, make you sweat and then get rid of toxins. And stretching is essential if we're sitting down all day as humans are designed to move. And the most important thing is to do exercise that you enjoy. There's no point in going out pounding the streets if you hate jogging. And I advise people to do between two to four sessions of 30 minutes per week. Switching off. Switching off is essential because your brain is like a muscle. Only 49% of us actually take our full entitlement of annual leave, with many of us surviving on just two weeks. If you work more than 10 hours a day, you're actually increasing your risk of heart disease by 60%. So this is the reason why we get ill when we take time off. And just remember, you are not the Energizer Bunny. When his batteries wear out, they get replaced. When your batteries wear out, you get sick, you burn out. You may get seriously ill and some people may die as a result. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but that's fact. So it's really important that you take time out. And we're living in this 24-7 environment, which is kind of like the grey zone where we're not completely switching off. And the modern day predator is the cyber tooth tiger, not the saber tooth tiger. Because we're at the mercy of all our tech, our tablets and iPads, our laptops, computers and our phones. Email. We're texting, social media, internet, direct messaging. You need to switch off. It is really, really important. Finally, moving on to focus. 72% of people find it difficult to concentrate on one thing at a time. And if you get distracted from a task, it can actually take up to 20 minutes to get back to that original task. So think about how many distractions you're getting through the day. And think about what and who saps your time. I advise people to use a timer and work in chunks of 50 minutes with a 10 minute break and repeat this once or twice more and then actually take a break for lunch. Only do one thing at a time and absolutely no multitasking and also make sure that you're not going to be interrupted. So to sum up, wherever you're working and whatever you're doing, adopt these lifestyle changes to help you become healthier, fitter and more energised. It will also help you perform better and actually make this country more productive as a result. So in the words of Spock, live long and prosper.